All right, Michael. So, fly ball thruster, eh? Well, we've machined a bunch of parts, and right now we're going to try to put the package together. We'll let you see it firsthand. <clears throat> what do we got? Parts? Lots of parts. That's the bottom support. Oh, you'll see where that hard work goes. Main spring. That's good. Uh, release mechanism. Let's see if I can put it together without uh, screwing up anyway. We're going to start with the side support arms. We have holes in the end to hold the front and rear plate. Pivot arm. And that holds the bottom spring mount. So, first things first, we're going to put some little threaded rods inside here. Let's try this. So we put those in. In order to tighten up the threaded rod, we use a lock nut system. Come on. Take two take two nuts. Lock them together. Now that they're locked together. We can tighten that threaded rod in nice and tight. And we're going to remove this. Yes, I should have entitled it. Fly ball thruster assembly from a guy who's never seen fly ball in action. But if it all goes according to plan, we'll test it. Try and kick a tennis ball off the workbench. Maybe off the stairs. So, lock those together. So these threaded rods just hold the um, the bottom spring, which actually makes sure the uh, release arm contacts the main. Okay, we got the threaded rod. I opted for a quarter inch coupling nut as my spacer instead of using a tube. This actually threads on. And just to get the spacing right, coupling nuts not quite an inch. I throw in a, a little grade 8 quarter inch nut just as a spacer. I assure you it took more time to machine the parts than it did or it will take to assemble it. Okay, so these are the mounts for the bottom spring. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put on the front mounting plate. So the front mounting plate, there's a hole for the main shaft, there's four holes to actually mount it to the box, and these countersunk holes is what's going to hold it on to these side arms. So, I have marked the sides. I have a single dot here. I have two dots there. That tells me that this piece with the two dots goes there. Because of the way these are fit together, they're kind of machined as pairs. This is a uh, number 10 by 24 flathead machine screw. Happens to be stainless steel. So it won't corrode on you. These little machine screws are um, about three quarters of an inch long. They're actually one, in, one inch long screws that I cut about an eighth of an inch off. <laughs> Just because that's what was required. Uh, what happens when you don't pay attention? Cut that one on, on video. There are two ends to these side plates. I was too busy talking about the machine screws. That one dot goes with that one dot, and these have to go towards the front. So, let's try that one again. I'll try this at home, people.
I didn't want to put them on backwards or on the wrong side, so I marked them all. All right. <clears throat> You'll see on the back plate when it goes on. I've got three marks here and three there, four here and four here. That way we don't confuse them. Okay. Here. This is the release arm. The release arm has a cold rolled steel bar that's going to contact with the whatever the dog steps on. And then this aluminum bar that goes on here, pivot bolt, threaded hole, goes together. So this little piece, again another number 10 by 24 stainless screw. This is a um, a pan head, Oops. pan head bolt. It's a machine screw actually. So I'll do just to make sure I don't. I don't want the two pieces to twist while I'm tightening it up. Beautiful. Okay. Now, I need to install these. This is a quarter inch grade 8 bolt. These little pieces here, this is a sintered bronze bearing that I've cut up to use as a spacer for this release arm. I have another one over here. stainless steel nylock nut. It's got a nylon insert in it. And the reason why I'm using that nylon nut here is I don't want to over tighten this. If I over tighten this here it'll pinch these together and this release arm won't move freely. So I'm going to tighten it up just until it's snug as long as this still moves. Well, that was actually a little too tight. There we go. It's got to be free moving. That's really all that needs. Done. Okay, now for some business. This is the main shaft. This is another sintered bronze bearing. The release arm grabs hold of this. So I've already mounted this on before at the appropriate length. I drilled a hole and that's a spring roll pin that's been pushed through there to keep this in place. So, to assemble this, I have a lock collar. I have my main spring that took me forever to find. Then I slide on the rear plate and on the back of that I've used this wire grommet. <laughs> it's my shock absorber to keep it from banging metal to metal. Which you'll see how that works in a second. Okay. And another lock collar that's going to go at the very back just to make sure it all stays together. So, lock on the lock collar. <clears throat> now that is going to be assembled. We're going to set the tension on this a little later, but right now we're going to slide this in here and we're going to assemble it. Two more of these little machine screws. shaft kind of wiggles back and forth in there. In order to set the tension, I'm going to take it and I'm going to pull it backwards a bit. I don't know, we can adjust the tension later. Alright. Looks 
pretty good to me. Might be too much, but we will see. And then the last little piece is the bottom spring support. I have this spring. I slide a washer into the bottom rung there, and then I'm going to take another of my pan head bolts and shove that down here. And this is just going to hold the return spring in the right place. Hopefully that all works. on the sides there. And maybe a gentle tap. Just set it down in there. A couple of nuts and we are almost done. So this bottom support pushes that spring up onto the release arm so that when I push it back to arm it, if that, oh, it's not adjusted right. Let me loosen this off a bit, the fine tuning. Okay, now I'm going to push the arm in and the release arm has gone up and has held it in a cocked position there. <clears throat> then, when the dog jumps on the door which pushes this arm, it shoots that out. Then you push it back and it relocks it up. That little arm pushes this, this release piece back in there. Alright! That's what it does. Now, let's go see if it shoots a ball. Here's my <clears throat> here's my 24 inch measure. Let's see what it does. I just tried this spring. I can get a new spring, but we'll try this one. Are you ready? Ha! Oh! Did you see where the ball went to? Or should we try again? <coughs> I think Link's will like kind of chasing that ball. Okay, let's try it again. So, push it in to arm it. Put the ball down here. If you want to film towards the end of the measuring tape, we'll do a countdown. One, two, three. Ah, oh, that about 30 inches maybe. <sighs> All right, I'm going to go into rest. Okay, Michael. Here, we'll show you back in the light. We'll give you a close up. And me and my videographer, Jason Cooper. That's Hi. Jason. He's been doing all the hard work. Yes. Very helpful. Thank you, Jason. So there it is. There's your fly ball thruster. Shove it in. Lock it in place. My thought, now i got to figure out something to hold to push the ball out. I give you lots of material. We probably can cut that off based on the box. We'll probably put one of these lock collars on here and I could uh, probably weld something to it. Now that's the prototype. <clears throat> this is prototype number two. They're both exactly the same. But I happened to build this one first and that was the first time I actually assembled pieces on this one. So 
They both can get armed, sat there. Oh! Sounds like little guns. All right. Well, Michael, I'm giving you that for now. Nice video. Maybe on sled and weekend, I'll give you the real thing. Thanks. Bye.